I'm, let me see, like a dry cleaner is, I'm impressed. I know that's a bad joke, but I couldn't resist. I'm surprised though, like like I was saying, this is the first time I've done it this way. Uh, let's see, I just wanted to get my audio confirmation. And one. Try, we gotta try. We're a little bit faster. Okay, seems like it's working, so I ain't gonna mess with it. Okay, so now we're here, done. Um, I think we got this, this I got him. Let me check one more time just to make sure I didn't mess. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and one other thing, share content and I want to share my screen. Start to All right, gentlemen. So welcome. So as usual, uh, that, that was an adventure. Uh, let me see, as far as announcements. Um, you know, just the usual announcements, I think nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. Let me see. So we we've completed section 6.3 right so for the for all of the semester right we only have one more set of new information remaining right we've completed all the information for exam three so we are ready for exam three right so that'll become available next week about wednesday and it'll be over chapter six sections six one six two and six three that's on the sequences and series right? i think uh yeah so we'll take today to go through section 6.3 and then available next Wednesday, right? Just like exams one and two, same kind of deal, just with a different set of information. So then after next week, it'll it'll become it should become available next Wednesday at the start of class. And it'll be due the following Wednesday at the start of class. And then that the following week we have one more section. It's a section, it's a supplemental section that's coming from a different text. But you can use Pearson. Um, I think everything is in Pearson that we need and I'll do a lecture for that as well. And We'll get that going and then we'll be ready for the final. I think after that week, so we have next week is exam three. And then the week after that, we have that supplemental material. And then I think we have two weeks of, of meeting times remaining. That's gonna be like four four meetings remaining, right? So we'll, we'll take most of that time to kind of be reviewing for the final. Like uh, I think we can do like, like an exam per session, like exam one is the first one, exam two is the second, exam three is the third. And like one of those sessions, I just wanted to do some exploring to see, can we take some of the stuff that we've been talking about and apply it? If nobody like chimes in or has anything, I'm gonna either apply it to like origami or games, right? And we can just do a little bit of research and just see what we can find. I wanna take at least one class to just kind of do some exploring. You're not, you know, again, as usual, whenever we do that, this is uh, remote asynchronous. I know you guys are busy. I know I could be boring or a, a whirlwind of emotions. I could be a whole bunch of different emotions, which, hey, I accept that, that aspect of myself. But I, again, I just want to just see what we can do because I know that there's something there. And I think it's important that one is that we clear about what we love to do. Like that's very important to me, right? Like what is it that you love to do? If you had all the time and all the money in the world, what would you do with your time? And then whatever the answer is to that question, more than likely, that's what you need to be doing as much as possible. So then once you're, once you're clear about what you love to do, provided you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, I think that's the caveat. Um, the, second, the second phase is figuring out, not that you really have to go hard on like making a living on what you love to do, but when you hit that mark of making a living doing what you love to do, you just, you're just living and loving life. And then people, you know, send you money for your expertise to me that's the mark of a, a truly awakened free being right and that's to me that's why i embarked on this journey of mathematics to free myself right i just was i had a knack for the concepts and i was having fun so i just kept going with it and, and not that you got to be a math or anything but you are with just in your own way 
And so I found a way to kind of get paid. I mean, obviously, like when I'm talking, when I'm chatting with you guys and talking about this stuff, you know, I'm just like having fun, right? And not that it's anything, but you know, I acknowledge that, you know, getting paid to do what I love to do. I don't, I don't hate what I'm doing. I love it, right? And so then it's like, okay, then my mind goes to like, well, how can we expand it, right? And 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 awaken other people and help as many people as we can to free themselves. Um, I mean, I got a crap ton of ideas too. I'm like, I'm I'm positioning myself where I'm removing distractions and removing like barriers and limitations that I place on myself in the form of like chasing money and worrying about this, that, or the other, and chasing women and stuff like that. And like, I'm removing certain barriers and I'm like, okay, well, let me just focus on what I love to do. And then my mind just like opens up and it's just like endless ideas. Um, like, I mean, they just go on and on. Like for instance, basically I'm gonna get my hands on a 3D printer and basically anything that I want, I'm gonna make it. Like, I mean, I'm talking like full houses, cars, cell phones, like any, like apparently with a 3D printer, whatever comes to your mind, you can print it and make it. And you can use any, any size 3D printer to make anything. And you just have to, it just takes a little bit of creativity, ingenuity, and openness in the sense that, like I've seen where they have like massive 3D printers and they print entire houses in like a matter of hours. And the idea behind that was, you know, say there's a, a, a natural disaster and you need a disaster relief area. And so you can take one of these massive 3D printers and print like little huts so that people can like get like medical care and have a room to themselves. And it just takes them a few hours to print it, right? So then, well, what if you don't have a massive 3D printer? You can like, if you, what, if you say you did have any kind of 3D printer, you can print the building blocks and the materials, right? And you can build, I was thinking like printing blocks that are no mortar, where you don't need mortar. Because there are uh, confirmations where you can build something and it, it just depends on the shape, right? The form determines the function. I actually got that from a martial arts instructor. The form determines the function. So if you, if you create the, the, the building block in a certain form, then you can you can get it to to behave the same way as mortar and you don't really need the mortar, right? And then and then you can start working on designs and thinking about, okay, what is it that the community need? Like if you have this plot of land or this area, what's what's needed in the area? What what are the, the issues or the challenges for the area that needs to be met and addressed, right? Like if you're in a tropical place, obviously like bugs, rainwater, um, like mosquitoes and flooding and hurricanes and stuff like that. Like, okay, do you need to build it on stilts? Uh, are you in a cold environment where you need to, you know, be able to survive uh, the, the cold places? Are you someplace that's really hot and you need, it needs to naturally be cool? Like, I mean, the list goes on and on. And so then once you're aware of like the problems of a community, now you have a lead and now you know what to focus on. And then, then it's like, okay, this area needs this. Now, how can I take my natural skill set and help with that with that cause, right? Again, everybody's a genius. You just have to, it has to be cultivated, you know? And you have to, you have to know that you are. Go, you have to go beyond believing that you are. You have to know it. Despite what friends, family, schools, institutions, professors, anybody, what anybody might say about you, that doesn't determine who you are. Somebody's opinion on you has no bearing on who you actually are, right? Nobody can tell you. You have to say it for yourself. So that's enough for the morning <laughs> announcement, you know, getting on the, the high horse. You know, I just felt that I was like, okay, let's just go with it. And, you know, it's okay. Uh, so with that, time, and again, as, as always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, feel free yourself just to get my attention. We can talk about it. Let me check. Um, let me check in this one more time just to make sure we don't have any stragglers. Okay, that looks good. Boy, like wheezing. I'm like, nope, that's not acceptable. <laughs> so we're going to straight, you know, to eat better. I was, I was listening to this this brother on um, on YouTube. He goes by Black Magic 393, I think it is, or 363, something like that. Man, his his interviews are awesome. He talks about everything like metaphysical, like spirituality and stuff. It's awesome. So he had a he had a brother on last night, man. He went he, and the title of it was called what was it called? It was called uh, it was something to the effect of uh, 
amnesia, you know, and he just went into all these different topics. It was it was awesome. I was like, yo. And I feel like every time I watch his interviews, his interviews be like two hours long. But I just put it on in my ear and I, I mostly be gaming and I just let that kind of go right into my subconscious. I um, mean, I listen, I kind of pop in and I, in the conscious level, but I basically load my psyche like uh, basically like in the Matrix, like like Neo. I just put stuff into my subconscious and I trust that it's going to come out like I'm going to remember or something's going to come to me when I need it. I don't stress so, so much about remembering every detail on the conscious level because that's just not how I'm built. Um, but I'll put a lot of stuff that's motivational and constructive and uplifting. I'll just play it and put it in my ear and just go about my day, either running, exercising, being in nature, gaming, just doing the things I love to do. Next thing I know, I'm getting flooded with all these ideas, right? I've been, and I've been doing it for a while. I've done it for like travel, so many different things, right? That's just one of the techniques. I'm telling you, this stuff is fantastic. So anyway, 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 let's get back on task. I know I spoke half the class. <laughs> Half our time just, you know, talking about random stuff that I love to talk about. But, you know, I have a platform, so I was like, well, let me take advantage of it. So looking at section 6.3, right? This is the first question from that section. It says, determine whether the sequence is geometric, right? So, uh, again, as a quick recap, section 6.3 is on geometric sequences and series. And, again, a sequence is geometric if given, you, you're given some initial, some A1, some first term, and then the subsequent terms are found by multiplying the previous term by some common ratio, right? So this sequence would be geometric, basically like, for instance, the first term is four. To get to 16, we multiply by four. So then if we multiply by four again, 16 times four, uh, what is that? 40 plus 24 is 64, right? And then 64 times four, thank you. 64 times four, 240 plus 16, 256, right? So on and so on. So notice that all of these terms are generated by multiplying the previous by four. So then we say, is this sequence geometric? We we're going to say yes. Final check. Because we're multiplying, we have a common ratio. The common ratio in this case is four because we're multiplying by four each time. Okay, hopefully that made sense, right? I feel, I feel like, you know, this isn't too terribly bad. It, it, there are some other concepts that get way worse, but arithmetic being that we have a, a common difference, we're adding the same thing each time. And geometric, meaning where we have a common ratio, so we're multiplying the same thing each time. Those are the main two types of sequences that we we kind of explore for our purposes. Determine whether the following sequence is geometric. If it is, find the first term and the common ratio. Okay. So for it to be geometric, we'd have to multiply the first one by negative four. And then negative four, right? So is the sequence geometric? We're going to say yes for part A, where the first term is four. And it looks like we're multiplying each term by, I think it's negative four in this case. All right. And feel free to use the chat as well or, um, or unmute yourself to get my attention. Um, we're not there yet, let's go here. And then also like I'm taking advantage of like the fact that I'm recording, right? And so I use it and then I could always pull it later. And I generally know how to say and what to say that's politically correct where I don't get myself in trouble. Um, Cause I mean, a lot of the stuff I say can be backed by like science and you know, it's, it's still scientific in nature, but I, I just have this whole metaphysical spin on everything. Um, determine whether the following sequence is geometric, if it is, okay, same thing, right? So with this one, we need to list out the first couple of terms in the sequence and then, and then just kind of check, right? So let's get a copy. This, this whole experience has come a long way. In the past, for me to live stream, I was using like my, my, my Mac, along with my iPad and like, you know, it was this whole production. Now I'm just using the iPad. And this is just from updates. Like I hadn't even gotten a new device or anything. It's just from updates. I think it's fantastic. I'm so excited. Cause now I'm primed to like be on the beach and still be like holding class. I'm like, okay guys, see you next time. I shut all this down, I'm on the beach. <laughs> Already there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's write out the first few terms of the sequence. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, I know this is about to happen because I can feel it. Okay. 
So let's let's see. So for instance, when n is one, a one minus one is zero. So five to the power of zero is one, right? So when n is one, the first term is one. When n is two, two minus one is one, right? Two minus one is one. Five to the power of one is five. When n is three, five squared is 25. When n is four, five cubed is 125. And then I think it's 625. And that's as far as I feel like going for right now, right? So it looks like we're multiplying by five each time, right? One times five is five, times five is 25. One by five each time. Okay. okay, so I think we're ready to answer the question. Okay. So determine, let me see. So the sequence is geometric with the first term being one and the common ratio being five. Same thing here. So let's list out the first few terms and look at it and then assess it. Um, definitions, I feel like that's the easiest way to decide. Just, just list and look at it. So, one, right, the first term, we have eight to the power of zero. So the first term is one in this case. When n is two, eight to the power of one is what? Eight. When n is three, eight squared, 64. 80 plus 32, is it 212? Up there, but it's it's kind of a, the same deal, right? Uh, yeah. Find by eight each time, just like the previous. Uh, I'm not seeing anything different. So, so let's we're going to say that the sequence is geometric, where the first term and the common ratio is eight. Let's just, you know, because it's kind of asking the same thing. Let's just get a screenshot. Let's list out. Let's list out the first few terms. All right. So seven plus four is what? Eleven. All right. So the first term is eleven. When n is two, two squared is four times seven is twenty-eight. Plus four gives us thirty-two. This one's feeling like a no. All right. Let's just keep going. When n is three, nine times seven is 63, plus four is 67. Now, I think that's enough, right? Because what we have to multiply, what's 32 divided by 11? That doesn't even divide evenly. We had to multiply the first term by 32 over 11. Even if we multiply the second one by that, um, Hey Siri, what's 32 times 32 divided by 11? 32 divided by 11. 
is about 93.0909. So 93.0909 is close to 67, but it's not 67, right? So this one is not geometric. And it should be C. They tried to get us with part D, right? Because the first term is is 11. And to go from the first to the second, you do multiply by 32 of 11, but that 32 of 11 doesn't get you to the third term or any of the others. You know, Andrew, so it should be C. First term, the common ratio, and the nth term for the following geometric sequence. So, um, let me hop over here real quick. We said that at the nth term of a geometric sequence, right? The nth term is going to take on the form. So, for a geometric Let me see, an is going to be, I think it was a1 times r to the power of n minus 1, right? So that'll, that'll give us any term as long as n is uh, greater than equal to 1. Term in a geometric sequence, okay? Term, so you can see it listed there, it's a 2. That was a good thing that I forgot. I was in the hot spot. That means it was working well. Uh, I hate to reboot this because then we'll lose. I mean, we, we hadn't gone. Let me go ahead. I don't know. Okay. Find what each term by three. So the first term is two. Multiplying by three each time. Okay, so we said the nth term of a geometric was a1 times r to the power of n minus one. So a1 here, a1 is two. I think we can do it here. So this is going to be two one, right? So this is the same as three to the power n divided by three. So then we could write this as two thirds times. I mean, I think I think this is fine. I'm going to submit it like this. It says, simplify your answer. Use integers or fractions for any numbers in the expression. This is accurate. Or we could write it as two thirds times three to the power n. But I'm going to try to submit this first. If we get a kickback, we'll we'll submit the other one. Okay. Let's try to hang out. Let's try to hang up for like another five minutes. Okay. Two more. And the first term, the common ratio and the nth term, okay? So it looks like we're multiplying by what? By negative two each time. So the first term is 0.3. Yo, we're multiplying by negative two each time. is going to be the first term, which is 0.3. Let's write it as 0 0.3, just so we can see it better. Eight of two. Of 
n minus 1. Clear, just feel free to unmute yourself. Let's go into the next one. Let's do another one. Uh, okay, so and each time it looks like pi to the power of four, right? Because if you if you multiply by pi to the power of four, you got to add those exponents, right? So then that's going to be nine plus four gives us 13. So the first term is pi, let's see, pi to the power of nine. Ratio is pi to the power of four. We're multiplying by pi to the power of four. Man, this has worked even better than how it normally does. Like normally I'm using my keyboard and it, it, it spashes out on me and then it delays me. I waste a lot of time just trying to type stuff in. This is like I'm typing directly onto the um, the tablet. It's been way better. So then the nth term is going to be the first term, which is pi to the power of nine. is pi to the power of four. If we say a power to a power, because we got to say that to the power of n minus one. So a power to a power, you multiply those powers. So we're going to say four times n minus one. Um, Let me see. We could simplify this down some. We could have pi to the power of 4n divided by pi to the 4. So then that would simplify down to you would say 9 minus 4 gives us 5. So it actually simplifies down to power of 4n plus 5, right? Because again, basically what we're doing, if you distribute that 4, you're going to have 4n minus 4. But then that, that minus four is the same as dividing by pi to the power of four. So if we're dividing by pi to the power of four, then pi to the nine divided by pi to the four is pi to the five. So then long story short, all of this is really just pi to the power of four n plus five. down to this. Here for the day. Formula for the general uh, term, the nth term of a geometric sequence to find the identical term of each sequence with the first term and a common ratio, right? So find A9, okay? So the nth term, let me see. So the ninth term would be a1, which is 5, times 3 to the power of 8, because you got to say 9 minus 1. So 5 times 3 to the power of 8. Let me see. 3 times 3 is 9. Oh, that's a large number. Five times three to the power of eight. To the eighth power is thirty two thousand eight hundred five. Okay. 
find the 28th term whose first term is this and whose common ratio is this. Okay. So then that means we got to say 10,000 times one half to the power of 27. Hey, Siri, what's 10,000 times one half to the power of 27? It's one over two to the 27th power is zero. What? Oh, no. It might be. I said it might be too small for her. Nine, yeah, round it to nine decimal places. So let's um let's do something because that's a little bit off. Um One, two, three times parentheses. This five means basically you the real number you move the decimal to the left by five spaces, right? Round it to nine decimal places. So I'm just gonna kind of type, I'm gonna move the decimal to the left by five. So that means I have four zeros in front of that seven, right? Well, so the right of the decimal place is the idea. A zero point one two four. Think about this. That's four, five, six, seven. Let me see. I'm gonna come in. Four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth decimal place where it says 505, that second five is the ninth decimal place. So we've got to look to the right of that, which is the eight. The eight tells us to round that five up to a six. So we need to do 506. Okay, I think that's it. Where is everything? Let's see. So we saw how, like, when we use Siri, um, her floating decimal, she, she, it couldn't go out far enough, so she rounded it to zero, and I knew that wasn't right. Uh, so then I was like, okay, well, let me use the graphing calculator to find that result. All right, gentlemen. Um, so let me just check Zoom one more really quickly. Okay, we got we got some people hanging strong. Let me try to get this uh, person that came in kind of late just to give them attendance credit. If there aren't any burning questions. I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. Have a good weekend and, um, you know, ex just kind of be ready for exam three to become available next week. All right, gentlemen, have a good weekend. If you're just joining us, I did give you attendance credit, right? Okay. So again, if there aren't any burning questions, um, we're going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Take care. Peace.